I've been reading the comments, and a lot of you guys say I need to stop skipping leg day. So I've got good news, and the good news is, I don't give a f What does need leg day very badly though is this vehicle right behind me. Some of you guys may see a car, but you wanna know what I see? Kids nowadays, they call it hovercraft fitment because you only see the arches, you can't really see the wheels, so it just looks like the car's going around just floating like this through the air. All jokes aside, today's the day that we're finally splicing up the GR Corolla. Not only are we doing a set of custom BCDS coilovers, I got a spicy wheel and tire package, and I'm excited to finally see all the mods we've done to this car makes when it comes to lap timer on the compound. the cow. What? The problem with all these Corolla videos is they're always between trips where I'm either completely jet lagged or completely cracked out from coffee. <laughs> right now I'm like in between both right it's now. a little mix of the two. Yep. So looks like... Yep. Yep. More coffee? It's like 45 minutes to six so we should probably give up at this point, right? <laughs> the wheels that I got definitely are not gonna work with these lug nuts. Guess we can't do this today. Damn. Shucks. It's funny because this technology is exactly the same as an LS400. They have not changed it what all, at all. I want to know the reasoning. If you happen to work at a Toyota and or other car manufacturer facility, and you can tell me why you would want to use this lug nut over a traditional conical lug nut, I'd be very curious to know. I'm honestly surprised this car doesn't have blocks. Have we not taken a wheel off this car yet? I don't think so. Yeah, we must not have. No, they're actually pretty light. Whoops! <laughs> oh, I sir. I'd cry. <laughs> no. You know what's cool? It looks like the rear doesn't even need to, um, like, you don't need to go into the interior at all. Look. Really? There's two bolts right here. And fun fact, oh. look at factory installed spacer. That's interesting. Yeah, so you can remove that um, if you need oh. to. I don't think we need to, though, for uh, the wheels that I got. Walk much. <laughs> Don't mind me using my 24 karat gold hardware to open up my BC racing box. Going through a little wheel rebuild for the E92 right now. We'll, uh, I'll give you guys an update on that project a little bit later. Maybe in this video, maybe in another one. Um, the reason why I've been waiting so long, I custom ordered a set of DS coilovers from BC. And if you know, you can custom order pretty much anything you want under the sun from BC. But the reason why I went digressive for this car, or I should say the reason why I go digressive on pretty much every car that I own, I think it's one of the best values that BC has to offer in their range of coilovers. And what you get is increased damping force at low piston speeds, which translates to good feel, turn in, all the things that you'd want from a stiffer car, while at high piston speeds, when like say you hit like a bump, pothole, speed bump, or something like that. It allows it to taper off and still have you a smooth ride. So you can get away with softer spring rates without having the car feel as boaty, I guess you could say. So this kit in particular, we actually went with the stock factory spring rates as the GR Corolla. I wanted to have a nice cushy ride for both myself and the future owner, because as you do know, giveaway car, every $5 you spend on LZMFG or Drifted 2 gets you, get you end up for a chance to win. And I'm basically building this car how I'd want to build it. And I don't want to go and put some shocks on the car that's going to make the ride super harsh for a car that's probably going to be used as a daily driver. So we'll get our adjustability, we'll get a little bit more performance, and it's going to look good too. Also, as a reminder too, if you guys are ordering a set of coilovers from us, from LZMFG or Drift HQ, we do have all of my rates for all the cars you see in here stored. A lot of cars, we've had quite a bit of development in figuring out what setups we like the most for drifting, daily, whatever. So if you want to order a custom kit, hit us up and our sales guys will get you dialed and you'll get a lot of entries for this thing too. Basically an E36 what I'm looking at. <laughs> Separate spring and shock, keeping it that way, which makes it really, really easy if you ever got to swap springs or whatever. And in this scenario too, it's gonna be super quick for us to pull everything out.
uses the factory mounts, but it does not use the factory bump stops. That's not a BC. They almost look plastic, don't they? The factory ones? Yeah. Good thing to compare it first. Since the spring rate's pretty much the same, we can see just putting in right off rip, that'll give us about, I'd say it's about almost an inch of drop. So we'll start there and then we can always go lower. Gotta take the windshield wipers off to do the front. Maybe you don't. I didn't look up a DIY because you know I want that satisfaction of figuring out all by myself. So I'm all right, as I'm removing the sway bar, I'm like we found another little Toyota Easter egg. There's neon green paint here on the sway bar. Not sure why. If you happen to work at the Toyota factory, you can let us know. Please let us know. Why green? Why not another color? Why paint it at all? What's the purpose? Tell me. This baby up to seven. Seven? That's a thick ass bull right there. All right, I now feel equipped to say this is one of the easiest new cars I've ever done coilovers on. Yeah. I didn't want to say it until I got the shocks out of the front because it was like, you know, you never know how it could be, but McPherson on a new car. Mm -hmm. That is kind of unique that it's a McPherson all-wheel drive car. I don't know if that's a common thing. I guess Turbo S is the same way. <laughs> what do I know? Ford was like, where can we go that has cars? We'll go there. <laughs> don't put that in the video. <laughs> no. People might know what the f I'm talking about. <laughs> talking <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> all right. Since again, the spring rate's almost the same, we can compare apples to apples and see. I mean, it looks like right out of the box, the kit came for about an inch drop, which I'm not gonna lie, one of those annoying things about installing coil levers, trying to get your ride height dialed. If it gets us perfect first try, I'm gonna be obscenely happy. Yeah. <laughs> but at least it looks like it'll probably get us in about the right starting position. And then from there, we can just go a little bit lower if we want to. Mm -hmm. Now I know what you're thinking. You've seen this box way too many times before and you can probably guess what wheels I got for this car. However, it's not what you think. I resisted the urge to put T37s on this car and I'll tell you why. I don't like, and this is a bold statement to make, I don't like T37s on modern cars. And I know that I've done it before, but I've looked at a lot of photos and for some reason, this car's body lines, everything's just too futuristic to have a TE on it. And I decided against that. I almost went C's, which is probably Tied with TEs is one of my favorite wheels. But these ones got my heartstrings. This is the ZE40. Now check this out. A little bit more futuristic of a wheel. And I did it in mag blue because my white super that I had with the mag blue wheels was probably one of my favorite cars I ever yeah, owned. That was a great combo. And the coolest thing about this is this car fits 18 by 10 squared. That's sick. For a like little hatchback like this. Yeah, I, I believe love we'll that. be able to use the factory spacers. So these are 10 plus 34 all around. Oh yeah. I mean, that looks pretty mint, my guy. Yeah. Look at that wheel though, that's gorgeous. I do think though, now like I'll either need to ditch this sticker or do something in blue. Yes. To tie it in. That would be really cool. Yeah, I'm really happy. You know, I, I don't like, because the fact that a lot of like new TEs have these markings, it kind of ruins it for me, but on a futuristic wheel like this, it makes it look so expensive. I like it a lot with the red caliber through it too. Might be wondering what we're doing for tires. This is actually a new Tire Streets exclusive. So this is the Armstrong Blue Track Race Tire. So this is a 200 treadwear class tire, which is really good for like autocross people, road course people, um, and it's also an extreme performance summer tire for those of you who want to put a very sticky compound on your daily. This isn't a full 100 tread wear like I've put on some cars before where the life on these still should be really good, but it should be extremely beneficial for spirited driving, which we're also trying to accomplish a good lap time. So I'm excited to see how these tires work. I've heard a lot of really good things about them, um, and the Corolla is a perfect car to try them on. If it's 265 squared, again, 
pretty epic for me i'm just used to only being able to fit like 235s and half the cars that i get so 265 squared on like a little hatchback is pretty sick super easy to mount curious to weigh the stock wheels in these because these got to be lighter even being significantly larger too yeah i'm just stoked the fitment looks like it's be pretty dialed mm -hmm. i was actually worried this is gonna be pretty easy to adjust the dampers in the rear if the car's in the air like you can reach your hand up there and yeah that's sick a lot of times the rears can be annoying because you get a cut holes in your interior to have the things poke through all right now this is where we figure out if we're gonna be here for two hours or if we're gonna be good right off rip <laughs> i think we'll be pretty good if anything that front might need a little more camber but We'll see. I'm just worried about how low we gotta go. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty dialed. It just depends, I guess, how low we're gonna go, right? It's not bad as a start. No. Like, that's a pretty decent track setup right there. I don't know, looking at this thing, I think I wanna go lower. Yeah, I mean, we could, definitely could. Going back to that two hour thing you were talking about there. What do you think about, like, uh, height front and rear, though? It looks to be pretty. I think it's pretty on point whatever we end up doing just match yeah the rear may be a little bit lower than the front is it off completely yeah okay it's a it's got a little rig to it not crazy i want to tell the folks what we're doing now i gotta come way more low yeah Called up my buddy David, who uh, has done quite a few different alignment setups. He's got a pretty good balance of like a streetable, but also really trackable car. He told me just pull all the camber out of the rear and it'll still be left with like two degrees or so. Um, no rubbing. And since it's a trailing arm car, it's pretty easy to do that. We're just going to bring this all the way in as much as we can go. That's gonna pull out all of our camber. We're still gonna take it to the alignment rack and get it dialed, but I can get a ballpark close beforehand. <laughs> Got the car outside now, it looks sick. And probably one of the coolest things is that this car, even lowering it probably what equates to about an inch and a half, almost two inches, the alignment almost stayed perfect. Now, mind you, we did add some camber to the front just to match the rear since it naturally has some camber gain. Um, but toe is pretty much perfect. We threw a set of toe plates on it, which I think is pretty cool. And that's kind of an indication also of a good suspension design because that means when the car squats, it doesn't have a lot of like toe movement. Um, I do want to emphasize, I'm excited to try the Armstrong Blue Track tires. And I want to remind you guys, not only are these tires an amazing deal at $100 a pop, but you have just a few days left to take advantage of my tire streets code that will get you 20% off site wide. It's August LZ. Head over, I'll put a link in the description. We're about to see how fast these things are. In addition to the BC Racing DS coilovers, we've got the new tires, we've got the Eventure intake, and we've got the HKS exhaust. We haven't even tuned the car, so I think power wise, we maybe have like a 10 or a 15 horsepower gain, but I think suspension and tire wise, we're gonna make up some serious time, and I'm excited to see how it stacks up on a leaderboard. I'm kind of torn, like I don't know if I want to drive it though, like a rear wheel drive car or like a front wheel drive car. I mean, I guess I should drive it like an all wheel drive car, but. I will make sure there's no rubbing before we go and do a lap, make sure everything feels good. Feel pretty confident in the alignment. Car feels like turn-ins a lot better. Even with the same spring rate, it feels noticeably more responsive. I'm impressed on the lack of rubbing. With how low this car is, very impressive. Stepping on the brakes pretty hard. guys now mind you pretty much no one does this lowers their brand new car and then drives it as hard as possible but the cool thing is we're going to find out if there's any rubbing so whoever wins this car uh, will have virtually no rubbing issues because we'll have pushed this probably the hardest it will ever get pushed all right three two one and go good launch tires feel confidence inspiring but still a good amount of feedback which i like a little slow through there 
little bit of understeer there. I feel like I can probably fix that with alignment. I might torn if I should go into second there or not. A little bit of rotation on braking, which I like. Overall though, it feels like a clean lap. I bet that's gonna be the fast one. Zero rubbing, looks slammed, still comfy, and it feels fast. That's sick. I, I can't complain. Best I physically can't complain. I'll get canceled if I do. <laughs> <Not just kidding. laughs> all right, let's go for a fast lap. Smooth is fast, smooth is fast, smooth is fast. Good launch. I want to make sure I don't go too hot because when I do, then I feel like I lose a lot of my corner speed with understeer. So keep it nice and tame. Don't put too much steering in, but smooth. I'm going to over brake here so I can get a nice turn in, keep it crisp, sharp. Quarter exits where I gain the speed. Okay, good momentum, good momentum. Over brake. I'm trying to trail brake a little bit to get the car rotated and it works fantastically. And put the pedal to the metal. I think that was a fast lap. It wasn't like crazy exciting. Damn, these brakes are good. So feedback on these tires, I don't have much to compare it to other than the ps 4 ss that came on the car. I'd say the grip level is definitely up some, but the nice thing is, it's not like when you put an Arcom on a car, like a super, super sticky tire, and then you lose the playfulness of a car and have like a big breakaway. There's still a ton of feedback. So I feel like this is a really, really good happy medium for someone that probably wants a longer lasting sport tire that they can do autocross track days with without losing a lot of the street ability and feedback that you get on like a different tire. Times will tell all, sir. Yeah? Times will tell all. <laughs> it's deceiving, you know? New car fast is different than old car fast because like you do it while you could also be having a cup of coffee in your hand versus old cars, you feel like you're gonna die every corner. Very true. This one you're just like, is my insurance gonna cancel me? <laughs> you know? <laughs> almost a half second off which doesn't sound like a lot but you have to remember it's only a 30 second lap so that equates to quite a bit and it jumped up one two three four five spaces with a 3107 thanks mike <laughs> overall i think there's definitely some time left on the table probably if i lowered the pressures down a little bit i was running factory pressures and also a proper track alignment I aligned it for what I think would be a streetable uh, car for people to drive, a little bit of towing in the rear for stability, a little bit of towing in the front for stability. On an all-wheel drive car, especially one that has a hard time rotating, you would actually run zero tow or even a little bit of tow out in the rear, which sounds a little wild, I know, and then a little bit of tow out in the front, that way you get better turn in, but I don't want to have to line it a million times, and quite frankly, most of these cars aren't track aligned. But I think the most interesting comparison here is the F80 M3 with a 3009 and the GR Corolla with a 3107. Only about a second difference, two giveaway cars, but F80 M3 has triple the horsepower. So True. kind of a, a cool comparison of it punching pretty way outside of its weight class. I mean, look, yeah. it's faster than supercharged NSX, it's faster than the Legend car, faster than R33 GTR. But uh, I guess another worthy thing too is to take into consideration that almost all of these cars up here all have like 100 tread wear gnarly tires. So for a 200 tread wear to be plugged in that far outside of his class, pretty cool. I'll give you guys a quick little update on this. The first plan of attack, which is kind of a continuation of the last video, was a bodywork experiment to see if we could roll this outside lip that always drove me nuts. It's almost good enough to fit the tire right now. But the problem is, um, even though the guys like trimmed and cut reliefs and all this stuff in the back of the fender, it still just won't retain the shape outward. So we're kind of at a crossroads of seeing if we can get a PDR guy to massage it out and see if it stays, or potentially um, actually just doing body work and then going and blending the panel, which is the last resort that I wanna do. But the goal is to basically put a cot in the bumper and flare this out. That way when you take a straight edge, you don't have this bow inward down there, that way it won't end up rubbing on the tire. Um, not something that people commonly do or worry about, but I would just love to have my OG wheels on this car with a nice fat tire. 
On the actual uh, like tuning and car side, the biggest thing that I learned from a lot of you guys in the comments was to switch over to a newer system that Motive has called Reflex, which is used on a lot of newer BMWs, and just basically does a way better job at controlling the port injection. A lot of people are telling me that some of the issues and inconsistencies with the car have to do with the port injection controller. Um, so that's something that I'm definitely looking into. There's a lot of great tuners that were recommended to me. And then PSI wants to handle some of the work of getting the car back up to par with all the newer electronics and things that will make it run reliably. So it sounds like we won't have to go down the standalone route and now the stock ECU stuff is good enough to even do flex fuel too. Before I had like some crazy system where I had to like switch maps and reflash tunes and all this where now it's all seamless. So this car, um, it's definitely not something that I foresee us having like back in perfect running form in the next week or two. But since we're starting on it now, I could say you guys could see this thing coming back to life anywhere in the next like four to six weeks once we get all the parts and get everything back together fitment dial and then start to enjoy it again so that's it for this video again just trying to do as much as we can in between trips i was hoping to get to toy on quite a bit more other than just the gr corolla but i'm stoked thing looks sick now um got some updates and developments going on with r32 gtr and other things you might see in the shop but uh we'll we'll bring you guys up to speed on that after utah we gotta fly out there go kick some butt and um, then we'll actually be back for a full week so we can dive into some projects so thank you guys for watching hope you enjoyed it i'll see you soon when you say a lot of people say I need to stop skipping leg day. Well, guess what? I don't give a. F <laughs> a lot of. Why is it doing that now? I see in the comments a lot of times you guys want me to stop skipping leg day. Well, the good news is. I don't <laughs>